<laughs> How's everybody doing? Merry Christmas, everybody. I know I got some birth charts for people to do, but I had to stop because some of the birth chart information that, uh, especially my friend Dion, I bought another stand, but you know, you know how it is. You know how it is. Right? Um, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm doing videos and doing the, the working on the birth chart. I'm this married couple from Detroit, Michigan. So I'm still working on everything. This stuff in there was a little, uh, a bit complication. And I had to like really double make sure. And then I was being thrown spells, you know, how that is. I have to postpone it and then take care of that. You know, and I think I took care of that situation real good. You know, so it doesn't interfere with the birth charts of these people that I'm doing, especially this couple. Right? Uh, Nathaniel, please give me a call. Um, I know you didn't like the reading I gave you about the you no know, relationship situation. That was what was coming up, though. You know, I don't control the information that comes through. But I, I know you don't want to hear it. And I know why. So we're going to try it again and see. Uh, you may have to ask me questions of what it is that you want to know. Especially now that you are uh, approaching your first Saturn return, Nathaniel. Right. And of course my friend Dion, Miss Aquarius. I got your stuff going on. So I'll be doing your charts. Stacy, I know you've been calling me. I'm still not ready to dispense the information that you paid for because it involves another person. So I have to be very, very careful about what I say and still be able to protect the integrity of this person who I'm doing for you who has no awareness of it. We may have to let them know that this is being done so like that uh, they are uh, aware that you have this information. Stacy. Um, Ms. Larson uh, called me. You try this ready, we can continue for some spicy. You know, I miss your energy. Uh, Louisa, you pay for a birth chart course and that will be available finally on January 1st with my friend from Peru, Luisa. Alrighty, I didn't forget none of you. Juma, how are you? How are you doing from Florida, Mr. Libra? Okay, I, you know, I don't forget none of y'all. And I look after all y'all and your interests. The birth chart is for an entire year and even though we don't talk about the chart or we haven't, some of you did not even get the chart to be read, doesn't mean that I'm still not on the job looking up overseeing uh, what should be unfolding for you, especially when we're dealing with your destiny. I'm drinking my Aperol. You know, yeah, it's delicious. Delicious, delicious. Ah. Uh, but you know, at this time of the year, I get a lot of uh, attacks, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I get a lot of attacks. And, you know, I have to deal with them. People do spells around the solstice and around these times of uh, holidays, thinking that it's going to accumulate energy you know, to take me down, I will take the collective down. But you all know Uncle Fernando, I'm five, seven steps ahead of the arts. I 
I pray for them too. I do. Okay. Let's jump right in. Star Wars. The Empire Strikes Back. And the rest of the trilogies of George Lucas's Star Wars. And Steven Spielberg. Number one, that kind of imagination is not something that, that just creeps up out of nowhere. Avatar, which we talked about. Such imagination, such imagination, high level imagination. How do they come up with these ideas to make these films? I used to say to myself, how do they do this? How do they get this type of high level imagination to write these films and do these films? You know, then I realized that it's not coming from the imagination. I told you that the Big Bang is still going and that these worlds are already created. Although it's in a different timeline than the current timeline and epoch that we're in. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people in the collective. And it's usually those that are in high initiation and are members of the elite that have uh, access to, to this type of high imagination. This is especially true. And this is true with anything. But it's especially true when we're dealing with space stars, things of a high caliber that the average human being doesn't even have the time to even imagine. Because, you know, we are completely distracted by life. The good thing about being wealthy, let me tell you, is not, especially those who understand the right use of wealth, is that wealth gives you time. You don't gotta worry about washing dishes, cleaning the house, doing the laundry, you hire people to do all of that. The wealthy, the, the whole concept of wealth is that it gives you more time to be as children and play as children. That's what they say that if you go, for example, like the Hamptons, right, in New York, well, I personally know that many famous people, including Steven Spielberg, live, I've actually seen his home in the Hamptons and in other places. And all of them live in the same proximity. It is a true playground for the absolute very rich. So what do they do with all this money, all this wealth, and all the time that they have available? Because when you're wealthy, you have all the time in the world to do whatever you fucking want. So when we look at filmmakers like George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, or if we decide to talk about business and 
we uh, mentioned the likes of Bill Gates, um, I think Steve Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook, uh, Steve Bezos, one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest man on earth, uh, Oprah Winfrey. What do they do with their free time that the rest of us are engrossed in daily living and survival, and blah, blah, blah? Well, I'll tell you what they do. You know, wealth is not by accident. You were born to be wealthy for a reason, or you wouldn't be. These people have the responsibility to advance humanity in a way that the average human being, average human being cannot even fathom. Star Wars is an actual reality. The, there's other, you know, there's mini series, right? Like Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, uh, Deep Space Nine. No, you, we think for those that are average humans down below, that these guys are just blessed with a fascinating imagination. And that very well may be, but that is not the answer as to why they come up with these fascinating movies that boggles the average person's imagination. Well, I'll tell you what the secret is. The Akashic Record. These people have the ability to enter the Akashic Records and actually see these worlds. And they have access to it because of their high-grade level of initiation. They're giving access to these types of realities that to us, it's science fiction, but it's not. Star Wars is, is describing the Capricorn age, which is due to get here in another 5,000 years, to the rate of precession. When Aquarius, 2,500 years from now, we'll be in Capricorn. Government, the government that we experience here on this planet and its highs and lows also exist on a higher level cosmically. Just like wars can happen between countries here on Earth, well, wars can happen between planets and galaxies and federation of planets. Uh, Star Trek, the new generation with Whoopi Goldberg, that's all Capricorn. They are getting this information from the Akashic Records. And they're allowed to do so because of the high grade level of initiation. And they, and they have the money and the power of wealth to create these movies. Understand that there is a cosmic spiritual reason behind these films. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you have so much money that you're bored and you didn't know what to do with it. So you just get up one morning and decide to do an epic film like that. No, that's not at all what it is. So you can understand that some of these high elites have access. They have access. And this is the occult mystery behind Star Wars. I'm giving you a little grain of it. So like that, you know, they don't take it down. This is a short video because I needed to accept that fact. 